Young Jedi Adventures, Season 1, Episode 16, Thoughts. This episode's called Mystery of the Opal Cave Slash Clash. And, yeah, uh, spoilers for, uh, potential spoilers for everything Star Wars leading up to, including this episode. Um, yeah, another great episode. Let's dive right in. So, yeah, very accurate that, you know, like, okay, so... Let's see, the, the name, Ava, is telling the, the kids, you know, oh, so, you know, these mines, this gems all over the place, there's a really, really nice one here, we get that from right over there, and Kai is like, oh, that boarded up place, what's that, you know, just, yeah, a lot of kids really, you know, if you tell them you can't go there, you can't do that, they're going to be like, really, why, and... This is the Scooby Doo episode. I I kind of love that. That's like, you know, oh, people say there's the you know there's this legend and didn't used to be a problem, but now recently there's been you know, and yeah, it does indeed turn out. No, it was it was a fog machine. It was a light. It was a you know a thing that made a shadow and you know the just yeah. I, I would say it's never too early to introduce kids to Scooby-Doo, but Scooby-Doo already is a kid's show, so... Unless it's in the hands of James Gunn. And, yeah, the... the um, I, I quite like, you know, the, the Jedi, the younglings saying, you know, we'll, we'll help you through your fear, which is a really important lesson for kids. You know, the fact that you're afraid of something doesn't necessarily mean that it should stop you or know, sometimes it should but and and I feel like other episodes have made it clear you know there's some things you really shouldn't do it's yeah you know yeah it's it's quite clear you know they're they're saying you know it would be great to go in there but we're afraid you know it would be beneficial because there's these gems in there you know but we're afraid so you know, it's that distinction. If it's good, but you're afraid, you should try to conquer that fear. If it's bad and you're afraid, maybe the fear is doing its job. And uh, let's see. Yeah. Um, you know, once they, once they, they find that it's just these machines making, making it look like the shadow monster is real, and of course the question becomes who is behind this and yeah it turns out to be Tabor who like in a blink of an eye goes from you know fear doesn't control me to what's that you know so yeah sending again an important message everyone feels fear and let's see Yeah, and, and there's the thing about, you know, it's important we not let fear hold us back. And that brings us to part two of this episode, Clash. I, uh, let's see, I believe non-binary is one of those things, um... You know, certainly there are, you know, I've, I've read about, there are, you know, there, there are trans kids who realize, or, no, yeah, yeah, realized, and, and, you know, through, like, talking to someone who understood it, you know, could put words to that they were, were trans, I, I want to say it was, like, as young as three years old or something, you know, because we don't give kids credit for that they know themselves a lot often a lot better than the adults around them. Um, but I... Let's see... Um, so the... Um, hmm, I'm not really seeing... Oh, here we go. Yeah. Uh, the gender of a person is fully developed when they are four to seven years old. You are never too young to be non-binary. So, yeah. Really great to... And, and I appreciate that the episode doesn't, like, belabor the point. Honestly, the moment that, 
Master Zia said they will be a great, you know, um, sparring partner for you, Kai. I thought Kai was going to be like, what's they? Why aren't you saying he or she will be a great sparring partner, you know? And, yeah, that they would go into the, the explanation. I think the idea here is that once the kid has heard the idea, they can talk to an adult who knows. You know, it's it's the same as, you know, they didn't make a huge deal out of the fact that I cannot believe I'm blanking on her name. I will have it momentarily. Um, Nash. They didn't make a big deal about Nash having two mommies, you know. Mommy and Mama. And, uh, yeah, just, you know, once the kid has realized, oh, this is, this is something that's actually, you know, and, and yeah, I guess also the, the yeah, in, in school, in, in kindergarten would have, yeah, so, yeah, really, really cool. I, I greatly appreciate how much Disney, you know, they definitely have faults in other places, but I appreciate that they are at least trying to spread these progressive messages. And I realize it's not that they're actually, like, I, I wish they did also actually believe them, but it's more that, you know, they they realize that progressivism is gradually making there's there's a lot of young people who are very progressive disney likes to expand their uh, what's they called F fan base and that's why but you know if you're doing the right thing for the wrong reason that's still better than doing the wrong thing in my opinion but yeah the let's see yeah both both Jovi and Kai like a challenge and you know Master Zia says it's it's not a competition and neither of them are really quite you know like Kai at first says but it's not a competition but he does still get into it rather than like saying Master Zia that that was a thing like I was like is she not gonna purchase? I mean, I guess she figures that they're gonna be okay, that it's still safe. But, yeah. But, yeah, you know, Kai could easily have said, Master Zia, you said that this is not a competition. They're treating it like, you know, Jovi is not following the, the, the rules. I guess he doesn't want to be a snitch. And, yeah, once... The, so, they're yeah, they're given the, the mission, and they... Are, they're crossing the bridge when Jovi turns into Snarky D. And, yeah, um, because I've watched fiction before, I realize, you know, by the end of the episode, they're going to be friends, they're going to be working together. But I do, pre it's, it's, again, it's an important message, and I really appreciate fiction for young audiences that's less about, oh, look at this bully, we should all hate the bully, which, you know, we should. But instead is like, why are they a bully? Why are they behaving like this? You know, because we do need to, to build a world where we're, yeah, using empathy as a foundation. And, yeah, you know, not long after we see Jovi become jealous D. You know, they are actually not, you know, they don't feel superior to, to Kai. They are actually as you know, they, they doubt themselves just like Kai doubts himself. So that's a, a really great, and that that is, there's a lot of people who treat others badly because they don't feel enough, they don't feel good about themselves, so they have to bring other people down. And it's, you know, I know, super basic. It's a show for like six-year-olds, you know. It's, yeah. And... I like the, the detail that, you know, both of them know a lot, you know, both of them know things that the other doesn't know, you know, or, yeah, at the very least, Jovi knew, you know, Jovi recognized, okay, this is like, I mean, it's like a trap, right, because it's like leaves over a hole, yeah, yeah, some, someone made a trap, and, you know, Jovi recognizes it, Kai does not, and... You know they're they're you know falling down the hole, and 
Jovi uses their lightsaber to to slide through the you know to yeah to not fall all the way down the hole. This is, I believe, the first time in the in the show that the lightsaber, the training lightsaber, has actually cut through something where it would need to be. I'm not saying it's the first time it's ever cut through, but yeah, clearly it is the the super hot you know lightsaber that adults use in in this universe, you know, because it's it's cutting through this this ground like it's nothing. So. I guess some of them do have, maybe it was an oversight by it, because I do, as far as I've been able to tell, other than that, they're basically wiffle bats that glow, you know. I, I agree that it's pretty ridiculous to be giving children actual lightsabers in this fictional universe, you know, and, and, let's see, from what I recall, let's see, it's not at all in Phantom Menace, it does appear in Attack of the Clones, but there, like, yeah, it's like reflecting stuff, but we don't see it actually cut through anything. But then in... Oh, wait, actually, yeah, I guess in, in Revenge of the Sith, it's also just reflecting. I'm not sure we see it cut through anything. But yeah, um, moving on. Let's see. Yeah, and they, you know, they get there by work and together. Nobody's going to get that. That's a reference to the 2017 MNT licensed video game. Anyway, yeah. Um, yes, the, the, that was my Raphael voice. But they, yeah, you know, they wouldn't have been able to, to get the stone if they kept butting heads, but they, they start working together. And then, you know, Kai is like, oh, you have a great idea, Jovi, about the, the lightsaber into, so... He jumps, and then they jump, and, you know, they're throwing the, the crystal back and forth. And I'm glad I'm not the only one who remembers classic Prince of... Well, classic, you know. Yeah, Prince of Persia from... Because that really reminded me of, like, I want to say... It was, I always mix up. Is it the Two Thrones? I think the Two Thrones. Yeah, because Rival Swords is the Wii port, although it's in both. Anyway, yeah, this thing of, you know... You jump up and you stab the thing. Of, you know, in that one you can't do it everywhere, but yeah. And we get a, a great lesson and metaphor. You know, um, Master Zia says, like all of us, this gem has a light inside, and it is up to Jedi to uncover that light. Again, a great message, you know, kids, go out into the world, bring the light out in everyone. And now, both of them are eager to work together, instead of annoyed at the prospect that they have to work with the other one. So, yeah, very nicely done. And, yeah, um... This might be my favorite episode so far.